Did you know that one out of every four people in the United States will move this year? It's true. That's a lot of moving. That's a lot of folks on the road. I challenge you, the next time you're out on the highway, take a look at how many moving vans you see, how many U-Hauls, how many Penske trucks, how many family cars just loaded to the brim. And you'll begin to get an idea of how much America's on the move. You know, I'm a military wife. I'm the wife of a retired naval officer of 31 years and attache. And uh, I have 29 moves to my credit. I've moved my family and all of my earthly possessions and pets from the east coast of the United States to Hawaii, to Europe, South America, and back again. That's a lot of moving. And there's something I've learned about moving along the way, and that's that it always hurts. Sometimes it hurts a little, and sometimes it hurts a lot. But physically, gosh, it'll leave you black and blue in places you didn't even know you had. <laughs> Sore and is a nightmare for your manicure. <laughs> Mentally, it'll make you a checklist insomniac with lists running through your mind all night long. And emotionally, it'll take you on a roller coaster ride with the highest of highs to the lowest of lows. And spiritually, it can create a desert in your life faster than you can say prickly pear cactus. It's a lot of change that goes on with moving. Some of that change is fantastic, giving you new opportunities for growth and goal setting and accomplishing things that you never would have had had you stayed where you were before. Other times, it can be quite frightening. And it can be fun. And it can be downright funny. You know, when change takes place, a lot of times communication breaks down. Let me tell you a story. We were living in South America, in Quito, Ecuador. And when you live in South America and you're the wife of an attache, you have to do a lot of entertaining, and so you have a staff. I had a maid, and I had a cook, and I had a chauffeur. And so um, the other thing that you do when you live overseas is you learn how to be a soft rather than a hard target by varying your route when you go places. And so on one particular morning, my husband said, listen, honey, instead of having my driver take me to the embassy, I'm going to take the family car. He was varying his route. Mm -hmm. So off he went in the family car, and I had to go someplace or other, and one of the other wives picked me up. We went and did what we were doing, and I came home. And here's Cleo Tilde, our maid. <laughs> Oh, senora, nosotros tenemos un problema muy grande. Now listen, even if you don't speak Spanish, you know what she just said. We did have a problem muy grande. I said, Cleo Tilde, what is the problem here? And she said, oh, senora, los pavos. Pavos are turkeys. Pavos, I said, what about the pavos? I walked into the kitchen, and I could not believe what I saw. On the counters on the floor, in the refrigerator, in the freezer, everywhere that you could possibly imagine. Cleo Tilde and the cook were stuffing frozen turkeys. 32 <laughs> frozen turkeys. Now what had happened is this. When you live in Quito, from time to time you're able to order from the commissary in Panama some American foods. And we were getting ready for our Thanksgiving celebration. I was really excited about sharing our American culture with our international friends, and so I filled out the form. And I'd only ordered eight cases. <laughs> I couldn't believe how many turkeys there were. What was I going to do with all those frozen turkeys? Well, I thought quick, and maybe the commissary has room at the embassy for these turkeys. I quickly called up, and sure enough, lucky for me, they did. Now the problem was how to get them there. Remember, I didn't have my car. So I told Cleo Tilde, quick, run around the corner and get a taxi. She did. She brought it back. I forgot. They really are only a cigarette lighter on wheels. There's no way you're going to get 32 turkeys and two people into that car and over to the embassy. We had to have two cars. So she ran back around the corner and got the second car. We got all the turkeys and all the people in the car, and we headed on down to the embassy. Oops, another problem. 
you can't take taxis into the grounds of the embassy. So we had to park the taxis along the curb and unload the turkeys. Now, the reason that I didn't have turkeys in Quito is because they're very, very rare and very, very expensive. So this was like the equivalent of taking Louis Vuitton luggage and lining it up on the sidewalk and saying, here y'all, just come on and take some. So I knew that we had to guard the turkeys, so I asked Cleo Tilde to stay with the turkeys, and then I went in and got one of those nice young Marines with an Uzi to come out and guard the turkeys for me while we carried them, one after the other, back and forth into the embassy. And you had to go through the lobby to get down to the area where they were gonna be frozen. So we're just about through with getting all the turkeys down when who should appear but Ambassador Romero himself. And there I was, holding a turkey in the lobby of the embassy. And so I said, good morning, Ambassador. And he said, good morning, Penny. Is that a turkey I see you're holding? A butterball turkey? To which I said, yes, sir. And I'd like you to have it. So he took the turkey. And he had his chauffeur put it in the freezer. Now, you might be wondering how those 32 turkeys got to my house in the first place. It was the ambassador's chauffeur who was sent to the airport to take care of this critical problem of 32 turkeys. He had picked them up and delivered them to my house. He was quite familiar with them already. Well, you know how you do things and you kind of hope your husband doesn't find out right away? I mean, you know, just kind of let it settle down and we'll talk about it later. And so I was glad the whole episode was over and he came home and it was, hi, honey, how was your day? Oh, mine was just fine. We had a nice dinner, went to bed. I'm finally uh, there relaxing and just about to go to sleep when Bill had gone into the bathroom and I hear him go, Penny! <laughs> there is a turkey in the shower. <laughs> well, you know, when it gets that bad, all you can do is laugh. And all I could think of to say was, dang it, Bill, I told Cleo Tilde to close that screen door. <laughs> Change can cause all kinds of trouble. And when it does, sometimes the best thing you can do is just dust off your sense of humor and go with it. That's just a little bit of what I'd like to share with you. There's one other thing that I found that's really important as I've moved from place to place, and that's staying connected. Staying connected with old friends while making new friends and never losing the connection that I have with my family of military sisters around the world and the body of Christ. It's through those hard times that family comes together and as we come together, we help one another. We help one another to be able to go through that very difficult process to successfully be uprooted, transplanted, and then bloom wherever you're planted.